Welcome to Nourish Technologies, I am Bangar Raju and this is the continuation series of our ASP.NET videos. And in this uh, video, I wanted to demonstrate about a very important concept in the web application development that is state management. What is state management? Okay, listen, web applications are stateless, web applications are stateless. What is that web applications are stateless? Yes, web applications are stateless in the sense, once we are going to post back a page to the server, when we, once we are going to post back a page to the server, the server will gather or take all the information that is present on the page, processes the page and once the page is processed, the output is rendered and sent to the browser. The output is rendered and sent to the browser and once the output is sent to the browser, immediately the server will destroy all the information about that page, means the controls, the values, whatever data that is associated with the page, everything will be destroyed on the server. The server will not maintain this information at all. So that is why once the server is not going to maintain the information, Output comes to the browser, after getting the output on the browser, server will clean up the whole data. So next time if at all we go for a post back again, next time if we go for a post back again, our old information is not available on the server because everything is destroyed by the server. So again, everything is going to start from the first. What is that? I will show you a practical example to make the things much more clear. First, I will open a windows project, a normal windows project. So, I am going for opening a windows forms application and simply I will call it the test project. So, on this form I will place a button. Yeah, placing a button on the screen and now my requirement is quite simple. What is it? Whenever the button is clicked, I just wanted to find out the number of times the button has been clicked. So, you can click on the button for one time or you can click on the button for n times, not known. But whenever we click on the button, it has to tell me the number of times the button is clicked. Okay. So, just simply giving the caption for this. The caption I am giving is hit count, okay, to make it a little bit visible to it. I will give the font size, fine, hit count. So whenever I click on this hit count, it has to tell me the number of times the button has been clicked. So to do that, I am just trying to declare one global variable, int count is equals to 0. Whenever the button is clicked, I want to increment this count value. Simply I am saying count plus equals to 1 and after incrementing this, I am just showing message box dot show and I will write hit count plus. So, this will tell me the number of times the button is clicked, the number of times the button is clicked. Okay, now let us run this. When I run this, yeah, you got a form. And when I click on the button, it will tell me hit count is 1. Every time I click on the button, you can see the hit count getting incremented. The hit count getting incremented. So, 6, 7, 8, everything is going to be incremented. I want to achieve the same thing with a web application. I wanted to achieve the same thing with a web application. Okay, a very simple code. What is it? Declare one global variable and increment that variable in the button click and display me and I want to achieve the same thing with a web application and to do that now let us open a web application project and afterwards we will just try to understand the differences between web and windows. So opening a new ASP.NET web application, 
let me name it as demo project and empty web forms. Let us add a web form on this. I want to do the same thing. Let me add a button. Hit count on click equals to button underscore click. Let me go to the code view and I wanted to increment this, declare a global variable into count equals to 0 and now come here, we will simply say count plus equals to 1 and now I am writing response dot write hit count plus count and this is the same logic what we just implemented in other web in the windows application also. So, right now there and here I am writing the same code ok. Now, let me run this. Yeah, we got the button click on the button hit count 1 and try to click on the button for the second time, but still you see the page is getting submitted have a look here the page is getting submitted to the server it is going to the server, but still the hit count value is 1 only. Why is the hit count value 1? because web applications are stateless that is what I was telling. What happens see in a desktop application in a desktop application windows application is a desktop application where it executes on that machine. When you run this application when you run this application the form runs this is the form it runs and now when I click on this it was just starting with a value 1 and when I click on the next time it is just going to increment the value. Why? The application is in execution, the application is in execution on the computer and all the values are stored in the memory and until you explicitly stop the application each and every value that is associated with the application will be in the memory. So, that is the reason why when you click on the hit count it is incrementing. Why? I need to stop it. Once I stop I will lose the value. Next time if I run again it will start from, again it will start from 1, but if I do not stop the same value will be continued for you for any time period ok. You leave the application like this for one day next time if you come again and click on that automatically it will increment the value to 5 provided the system is not shut down ok. It will just going to increment the value like this why this value is in the memory the same value continues for the next levels, but web applications are not the same. What happens web application? Web applications are not executing on the local computer. Where do they execute? They execute on the web server. So, in a web application what happens is when you run this and you click on the button, when you click on the button the page is submitted to the server, a post back happens and when the page is submitted to the server what happens? Now, first the page events will execute, there is no logic in the page event then no logic in the page event, first a declaration of the count will take place and next page event will execute, there is no logic in the page event and afterwards as we discussed earlier cached events will execute, right now we do not have any cached events and afterwards post back event will execute, what are the post back event? The button click is a post back event and this post back event is going to execute now and will increment the count value to 1 and send the response now, hit count value as 1, hit count value as 1. And once the output is sent to the browser immediately the complete information about the page is destroyed on the server a simple whitewash everything is destroyed. The values are not going to be persistent in the sense the count value 1 is lost on the server because the count value is lost when I click on the button again again it is going to redeclare a count variable with a value 0 again tries to execute the load event, but nothing is there and then it goes to click event and again will increment the value to 1 and displays you the value as 1. That is the reason why any number of times you click on the button that value will not increase. Why is it not increasing? Because the server has destroyed all the information about this particular page on the server or about this particular class on the server, which class? Web form 1 class. Once the output is rendered and sent to the browser, everything is lost on the server. So, web applications are stateless, but it is very important for us now. What is that? See, 
if you lose the values like this, this time okay, but tomorrow you may be having some valuable information and that information may be required for you in the next request. That information may be required for you in the next request. Suppose I am giving you a username and password and login into the site. After logging into the site, to go to the next page, again that username value may be required for me now or again that password value may be required for me now. If the web server is going to destroy those values next time when I try to log in, again it will ask me to enter the username and password. Every time I try to log in, every time it will ask me to enter the username and the password values. It is compulsory to enter username and password to every page we just try to log in or every page we are trying to access. Tomorrow if the page is going to, if the site is going to have 100 pages in it, to go to every page, every time you require to enter the username and password because the pages will be secured and without username password they will not allow you access. First page you supplied the username and password, login page you supplied username password but once you go to the next page automatically the username password values are lost. So again it will ask you every page you want to access every time the login page should open and every time it has to ask you the username as well as the password values. This is a problem what you will be facing if you are not able to maintain the state of the values. To overcome this problem, to overcome this problem, we are provided with a concept called as state management. What is state management? State management is a process of maintaining the state of values, the state of values between multiple requests of the pages the page or pages, I say page or pages because it can be between the same page or it can be between other pages also between page 1 to page 2 or page 1 to page 1, same page or other pages also, okay. State management is a process of maintaining the state of values between multiple requests of the page or pages. It can be between the same page or it can be across other pages also. Now, if you can maintain the state of values, if you can maintain the state of values, what is the advantage? What is the advantage is when you go in the next request, all the values will be provided to you and you can just make use of those values. So, if the state of the values can be maintained, I do not require to enter my username and password to each and every page I am going to navigate. So, one time, first time when I just provide the username password and the same values can be used in the next pages for navigation. So, that is the advantage of maintaining the state of values. But the question arises, how to maintain the state of values? To maintain the state of values, to maintain the state of values, ASP.NET provides us different options, different options where those values can be maintained, can be maintained either on the client's machine or on the server machine. We have an option to maintain those values either on the client's machine or on the server machine also. Anywhere you can just maintain the values, two different options are there, client side as well as server side. If you want to maintain the state of values on client side, we have a list of options. To maintain state of values state of values on client machine, we have a list of options like first one hidden fields, second one query strings, third view state, four control state and five cookies. Hidden fields, query strings, view state, control state, cookies. Actually view state, control state, uh, let us just talk as view state and control state, cookies. And uh, we can also maintain the values on the server side, correction here. To maintain state of values on server machine, we have two different options like session and application. 
So, we can maintain the state of values by using any of these particular options. So, that is your choice. We can maintain the state of values on the client machine by using all these things as well as we can maintain the state of values by on the server machine also by using all these things. We will try to understand about each and everything in detail. What is hidden field when to use? What is the query string when to use? What is view state cookies as well as when we go for maintaining the values on the server side by using sessions and applications. Okay? So, this is what the basic fundamental information about state management. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Naresh IT.